In our stress-filled life, wouldn't it be nice if you could open a door? Back to the simple life. 298 miles of shoreline, scenic roads, fish boils, quaint harbor towns, cherry and apple orchards make this a favorite Great Lake getaway. Oh hey, welcome to beautiful Door County. Last week, we showed the Wisconsin Dells, and in the next two weeks would be Milwaukee and Green Bay. But this week, we head just north of Green Bay. In this second of four videos from Wisconsin, we take you to what is perhaps the most beautiful part of the state. Some call this the Cape Cod of the Midwest. Door County sits between Lake Michigan and Green Bay with a 55 mile strip of land that at its widest point is 18 miles and narrows to two miles at its northern tip. Offers both a gorgeous sunrise and sunset over water. In addition, with four islands only accessible by ferry just north of the mainland, there's plenty of water fun. In this video, we'll take you to the largest of those islands, Washington Island, crossing the straits known as Death's Door, which is where the name Door County comes from. Here we hop on a moped and check out a lavender farm and cafe, an observation tower, go pack go, and go to a beach with polished limestone rocks. Door County has 11 lighthouses, we'll show 6 of them. On the Lake Michigan side, we will take you to Cave Point County Park, with underwater caves and limestone cliffs. And on the Green Bay side, check out Peninsula State Park. We'll explore the coastal towns of Sturgeon Bay, the door to enter Door County, Bailey's Harbor with Door County's most iconic lighthouse, Egg Harbor with a great counter serve breakfast eatery, Fish Creek for a boat tour and a delicious Door County cherry sundae, mm -hmm. Sister Bay where you find some goats on the roof, and Ephraim for some parasailing. So come with us as we explore this water paradise by drone, by moped, by boat, by bike, by parasail, and by foot. But watch your step as we take you back to the simple life in Door County, Wisconsin. We start with a sunrise over Lake Michigan at Bailey's Harbor, where you'll find the Cana Island Lighthouse you cross the little causeway to the lighthouse. Often the water level will cover this causeway, but there is a hay wagon you can ride to the lighthouse. This lighthouse is open May through October, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can climb the 97-step spiral staircase to the top. It is $12 for adults and $10 for children 5 to 17. We stayed at Bailey Sunset Motel and Cottages, about 15 minutes from the lighthouse. Lodging can get a little expensive in Door County, but this motel was very reasonable. Good room, Wi-Fi was great. It was very quiet, really enjoyed it here. There's an outdoor fireplace and picnic area, and they are dog friendly. We are going to the south part of Door County at Sturgeon Bay, then head back north, but on the way, gonna stop for coffee in Jackson Port. Between Bailey's Harbor and Sturgeon Bay at the Square Rigger Lodge is a little bit of coffee with baked goods and quiche. A nice wooden deck overlooking Lake Michigan. A great way to start the day. If traveling with a dog, these Kurgo dog backpacks are the best. I put a link in the description below. While the Door County line extends south of Sturgeon Bay, it's really the Bayview Bridge crossing Sturgeon Bay that is the door to Door County. Now if you follow the bay to the east, it turns into a canal before coming out at Lake Michigan. Here you will find the Sturgeon Bay Canal Light, which is not open to the public with the exception of the second weekend in June when there is a lighthouse walk. However, on the Pierhead Light, you are able to walk out on the lower level break wall. On the south side of the canal is the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal Nature Preserve with a wooden walkway that leads to the beach.
If we follow Sturgeon Bay to the west, it leads to Green Bay. It is here on the south side of Sturgeon Bay. You'll find the Sherwood Point Lighthouse. This was the last manned lighthouse on the Great Lakes until becoming fully automated in 1983. If you would like to view this lighthouse by boat, as well as the rest of Sturgeon Bay, you can take a cruise out of the Sturgeon Bay City Marina at the Stone Harbor Resort with Sail Sturgeon Bay. This is the historic Bay Bridge. For many years, this was Highway 42 connecting the mainland to Northern Door County until 1978 when the Bayview Bridge that we showed earlier was built. On the northwest side of the bridge is a great waterfront restaurant, Sony's Italian Kitchen and Pizzeria, and the Bridge Up Brewing Company with elevated seating overlooking the bay. After dinner, you can go for a nice walk on a trail that jets out into the bay. On the southwest side of the bridge is the Door County Maritime Museum. It offers interactive exhibits and tours of the Jim Crest Maritime Lighthouse Tower. It is $15 for adults and $7 for children, 5 to 17. For an additional $5, you can take a guided tour of the John Purvis Tugboat. This building next to it is the Door County Granary, currently being restored to be a public gathering venue. You can also rent jet skis and boats here with Door County Boat Rentals. A 22-foot pontoon is $135 for two hours or $185 for four hours. Gas is included. Pretty reasonable. Downtown Sturgeon Bay on Historic 3rd Avenue is home to art galleries, specialty shops, restaurants, and quaint lodging. In mid-September is Harvest Fest, where there is Cruise by the Bay, a classic car parade. There's Starboard Brewing Company, a nano brewery, and tap room. Also, Door County Fire, a bar and grill in a former firehouse. All right, let's head back to the Lake Michigan side, to Door County's most unique park. Cave Point County Park is just a 10-minute drive from Jacksonport, where we had coffee at earlier, so that might be a great stop for breakfast before you hike these trails. I suggest to do it in the morning on a sunny day, when the sun is on the eastern side, as it provides a nice color to the water. Be aware, there's no guardrails, so watch your step. The sounds are incredible. The waves crashing on the limestone cliffs and underwater caves. To get a close-up view of the caves, you may want to take a two-hour kayak tour with Peninsula Kayak Company. It is $67 per person, including taxes and fees. They also have rentals for kayaks, paddleboards, and e-bikes. They are located next to that coffee shop. Cave Point County Park is completely surrounded by Whitefish Dune State Park. If you stop at the areas within the state park, it requires a sticker, which is $11 for a day pass, for out-of-state cars. You can pick one up at the visitor center. Here, there is a mile of sandy beach and two miles of a rocky shoreline as well, and over 14 miles of hiking and skiing trails. Also a nature center and a 2.4 mile trail that leads to Old Baldy, the highest dunes in the park, at 93 feet, with an observation tower overlooking Clark Lake and Lake Michigan. Before we jump over to the west coast, I want to show you a couple of places in Bailey's Harbor. There's the Door County Brewing Company that also has barbecue and brats and live music. Across the street is the Harbor Fish Market and Grill with seafood, meat dishes, and lobster boils with views of Lake Michigan. Fish boils are part of Door County culture. The tradition started from early Scandinavian settlers. It's typically white fish cooked outside over an open fire, usually in a large metal kettle, often with onions, potatoes, and corn, topped off with a slice of Door County cherry pie. Here they are doing a lobster boil. Several restaurants across Door County do this. It's good to call ahead for reservations as they are very popular. Now we head to the Green Bay side of Door County to Egg Harbor. The Big Easy is here, a deluxe bagel shop, but they have so much more, it's really a counter-serve eatery. They have a good assortment of muffins, as well as bagels, breakfast dishes, and salads. It's family-owned, friendly staff. I went with a breakfast quesadilla with andouille sausage. It was $14, but easily enough for two people. Bella sure loved it. Also here is Shipwreck Brew Pub in a rebuilt 19th century inn with patio seating. They also have a good website for easy ordering online. 
And for desserts, there's Grumpy's Ice Cream and Popcorn. And next door, Casey's Barbecue with cherry wood smoked chicken ribs and brisket. Also have outdoor seating overlooking Egg Harbor. Okay, for now we are going to pass through Fish Creek and Peninsula State Park, but we'll come back and show these places later in the video. Since we have a parasailing appointment in Ephraim, which is located just east of Peninsula State Park. Ephraim is a quaint little village town with Norwegian roots along Eagle Harbor. With its vintage buildings, marinas, and scenic bluffs, it reminds me a lot of the coastal towns we filmed in our video of Maine. It's an ideal setting for a romantic getaway or honeymoon with its cottages, suites, and hotels that line the shores. Ideal for sunset walks. There's live music at Ephraim's Harborside Park Gazebo. And being right next to Peninsula State Park, there's plenty to do here. There's Wilson's, a vintage soda fountain restaurant with house-brewed root beer and burgers. It's been serving Ephraim for well over a hundred years. Across the street at the South Shore Pier, there's Bella's Sailing Cruises. For a two-hour sailboat cruise, it is $40 for adults and $35 for children 5 through 12. Children 0 to 4 and dogs are free. You can also rent wave runners, pontoons, or paddle boats at the South Shore Pier. And you might run into Pixie here. She's a greeter here at Wisconsin Water Wings Parasailing. This is great, not only the parasail ride, also the boat ride out towards Peninsula State Park is very scenic. It is anywhere from $65 to $105, depending on how high you want to go, from 200 feet to 500 feet. If you do the 500 feet, you'll get 13 to 14 minutes in the air, which is a pretty good length of time compared with other parasailing companies. That right there is Sister Bay Scenic Boat Tours. They have cruises from $29 to $42. There's Horseshoe Island, and in the distance, Peninsula State Park. We are on final approach. After the fun in the air, it was time to land. Uh, this is Cheesehead 102. Am I clear for runway one left? Clear to land, runway 27 right. Landing gear now down in left. The whole length of time, including the boat ride, is 40 to 80 minutes, depending on the amount of flyers. Pulling the drag chute. Main gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. We continue our drive up scenic Wisconsin 42, which runs for 135 miles from Sheboygan to Northport, where we are headed to the ferry docks. Three miles northeast of Ephraim is Sister Bay. Sister Bay has more shops than Ephraim, and also some very unique restaurants, like Husby's Food and Spirits, set in a vintage gas station, a pub grub with live music and TVs, with an outdoor patio. There's the Door County Creamery with artisanal cheeses and lunchtime goat farm tours. If you saw our Pigeon Forge video, we showed goats on the roof and talked about how it was inspired by a place in Wisconsin. Well, here it is. Al Johnson's, a Swedish restaurant, along with Stauber Kitchen. There's a large green space with long games. The goats generally come out around 9 a.m. from late May to mid-October. On their website, they have a live goat cam. I came through later in the day here, so it wasn't many goats, but there's a couple right there. Across the street is Sister Bay Beach and Park with a stage area where there's outdoor concerts. Also a gazebo and a little pier that you can walk out on. Next to that is the marina where you'll find the Sister Bay scenic boat tours that we saw while parasailing. There's the double-decker vessel right there. It's called the Nora Door. You park in the lot across the street. They also have jet skis, pontoons, and speedboats you can rent as well. Further down North Bayshore Drive is the Boathouse on the Bay for some delicious seafood with elevated seating overlooking Sister Bay. There's also a Pirate's Cove Adventure Golf. Five miles north of Sister Bay is Ellison Bay, where there's Ellison Bluff State Natural Area with walking trails and elevated views of Green Bay. We have arrived at Gills Rock, the northern tip of the Door County mainland. There's two ferries you can take to Washington Island. Here we are taking the Island Clipper. This ferry doesn't take cars, but if you continue on Highway 42, another two miles to the end at Northport is the larger Washington Island Ferry. Here you can go with your car or just as a passenger. 
It is $28 per car each way and $15 per person for adults, $8 for children 6 to 11, $6 for bicycles round trip, an additional charge for oversized vehicles. The Island Clipper Ferry that we are on is the same for adults, $15 per person, and a dollar cheaper for children at $7, but $2 more for bicycles at $8. Both ferries are pet friendly. On this one, it's probably a little bit more of a rockier ride over the waters, being a lighter weight vessel. You cross the Portes de Mort Straits, known as Death's Door, due to the number of Native American lives lost, as well as shipwrecks with its treacherous waters. It's about a five mile trip to Washington Island and takes about 20 minutes. We cross by the Plum Island Rear Range Lighthouse. These straits link Lake Michigan with Green Bay. We arrive at Washington Island. There's about 700 year-round residents on the island, but with the tourists and seasonal workers, the summer population can go as high as 3,500. The island is five miles wide and six miles long, and the places of interest are pretty spread out. Therefore, it's good to have transportation on the island, like a bike, moped, car, or a cherry train tour. Right near the ferry docks is Annie's Island Moped Rentals. It is $55 an hour or $80 for two hours or $95 all day. If you really want to see the whole island, you definitely need more than two hours. They don't do reservations, but I did call ahead and they had a moped waiting for me all set up. Also near the ferry docks is Island Adventure Company, where you can rent UTVs, e-bikes, and kayaks and paddle boards. Another option for transportation is to take a cherry tour which is part of the Washington Island Ferry. This is a 15 mile, 90 minute to two hour tour with selected stops along the way. It is $22 for adults and $10 for children, six to 11. There's a couple of eateries near the docks. There's Island Pizza, but they don't take credit cards and also Point Grill with smoked barbecue. They are next to the Island Adventure Company. All right, let's take you around the island. About two miles from the ferry docks is the Albatross restaurant for burgers and ice cream with shaded picnic areas and glider swings. About a mile up Main Road is the KK Fisk restaurant and the Granary Saloon and Coop, a popular hangout with fresh seafood. One of the things Door County is known for is lavender farms. Here there's the Fragrant Isle Lavender Farm and Cafe. I came the second week of August, so they already started harvesting the lavender. If you come in June or July, the lavender fields have even more color. There's also a shop to pick up some scented oils, and they have a good website so you can order and smell a little bit of Door County before your trip here. There's also a little cafe with a beer and wine distillery. They had some lavender pastries, which I would have loved to have had some, but didn't have much time, so on to the next location. There's the Mountain Park and Lookout Tower, which is 180 steps. Go pack, go. Good enough to get some cardio. Just northeast of Washington Island is the much smaller Rock Island, right there. You can also take a ferry there. It's much smaller than Washington Island. Has the Rock Island State Park with the Potawatomi Lighthouse. Now we move to the northwest part of the island, to one of the most unique beaches on the Great Lakes, Schoolhouse Beach, named so for a wooden schoolhouse that used to be here. But what is still here are these very polished tan limestone rocks, as well as crystal clear blue water. As we start to travel back to the ferry docks, there are also cottages on the island you can lodge in, like Desjardins Island Cottages. They require a three-night minimum. They do have one cottage that is pet-friendly, the Sportsman Retreat. There is also the Deer Run Golf Course, with both a regular and mini golf course. After two hours on the island, it's time to get back on the ferry. This is the Washington Island Ferry here. There is so much on the island that I just did not have the time to see. So I think you definitely want to plan a whole day here. We arrived back at Gills Rock. Now time to head back south to Peninsula State Park. In Ellison Bay is the Mink River Basin, a sports bar and grill with microbrews. Now passing back through Sister Bay. 
Wisconsin 42, just so scenic along these harbor towns. Now back in Ephraim, a look at the Ephraim Yacht Club. On the left, the old post office restaurant. They have fish boils every night except Sundays from mid-May to the end of October. The Ephraim Waterfront and across the bay, Peninsula State Park. The parking is starting to fill up as people go to the restaurants, also gearing up for a nice sunset on the bay. The Peninsula State Park Golf Course has both a six-hole short course and an 18-hole long course. Now entering Peninsula State Park. Being this is a state park, you do need a sticker, which you can pick up at a visitor center. It is $13 for out-of-state plates. This park has eight miles of Green Bay shoreline. It's the third largest state park in Wisconsin. It's open 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. year-round. Has 460 campsites, a summer theater, a sand beach, and the Eagle Bluff Lighthouse. Visitors are able to walk through the buildings during a self-guided tour. We'll show you also a cruise that you can take from Fish Creek in a bit to see the lighthouse from the water. There is also Eagle Tower at 60 feet high, located on the top of Eagle Bluff, which is 253 feet over the bay. You can either climb the 100 tower stairs or take the 850 foot canopy boardwalk. The observation deck offers panoramic views of the park. You can see the upper peninsula of Michigan way off in the distance. There are 10 trails totaling 20 miles. You can see bufflehead ducks, mergensers, bald eagles, and maybe a cheesehead or two. And the sunsets from Welker's Point are just stunning. Even after the sun goes down, there's also the Northern Sky Theater. And right next to the park, for more nighttime entertainment, there's the Skyway Drive-In. It is $10 for adults and $6 for children 5 to 11. It's a double feature of first-run movies. As we are nearing the end of our video, we now come to our final village town and really considered the hub of the shopping, dining, and recreation in Door County. Fish Creek, another town next to a scenic bluff with a large harbor shoreline on a bay. In addition to Peninsula State Park, which is considered Fish Creek, there is Sunset Beach Park, another great spot for postcard sunsets over Green Bay, along with several scenic waterfront parks with benches, restrooms, piers, and wildlife. There are several good restaurants here along Main Street, like the White Gall Inn Restaurant, which has one of the most popular fish boils, four nights a week in the summer and on Fridays during the winter. There's the loft, where you can taste Korean chicken wings or calamari in a covered courtyard. The Welker's Lounge, a speakeasy with premium draft beer and wines. For cruises, there's the Fish Creek Scenic Boat Tours, which has narrated cruises to Eagle Bluff Lighthouse that we just showed, as well as the caves of Peninsula State Park, Millionaire's Row, Eagle Cave, Egg Harbor, and Ephraim. They have a 90-minute sunset cruise daily with live music. The sunset cruise is $42 for adults and just $5 for children 12 and under. And we end at maybe one of my favorite spots. Not licked yet, frozen custard. It's a counter-serve outdoor eatery. During the day, you get charbroiled burgers with grass-fed beef and brats, as well as the delicious desserts. It is set along the creek with rocking chairs. There's a big playground for kids and plenty of seating on a heated patio. Bella's having the frozen custard. I'm having the Door County Sunday with homegrown Door County cherries. It's got cherries, pecans, maybe some walnuts in it, right after a fall day of filming. Well, I have to say Door County has been one of my favorite places to film. 
I found the people to be very friendly, both the tourists as well as those who lived there. Met many nice people. I think you would really enjoy a trip to this simple yet plenty to do part of Wisconsin. Oh, and the fall colors are just spectacular here. That is another great time to come. There is so much to do in Door County that I didn't even show. So I'd love for you to share in the comments below what you did in Door County. Also wanted to mention, I started using the Canon R7 mirrorless camera after breaking my 90D in the Wisconsin Dells and have been very pleased with its image stabilization. And it's also small enough where I don't get hassled bringing it into a professional sporting event. And it comes with an 18 to 150 lens. Gives me a nice focal length. I put a link below. Using my links helps me to pay for these videos. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA. For stock footage, or if you'd like to hire us to film your city, region, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Well, we still have two more videos of Wisconsin. Next week, we bring you to its largest city, Milwaukee. In this busy world, I hope you get times to take a step back into the simple life. From Door County, I wish blessings to you, wherever you may be. See you next week in Milwaukee.